Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Big Daddy Top Hat here. Street Fighter is by far the most iconic fighting game franchise of all time, resulting in a variety of memorable characters who have captivated the imaginations of gamers everywhere. What many of you will probably already be aware of is that Street Fighter games and those from the Final Fight series share the same universe, which is for example why Chun-Li can be seen in the background in Final Fight 2, or much more obviously why so many Final Fight characters have gone on to turn up as Street Fighter roster members. One of the first of these ever to enter the Forbidden Door was of course Guy within Street Fighter Alpha Warrior's Dreams in 1995, going on to make regular appearances right up until this day. Today we shall be telling his story, covering his origins and every single video game and media appearance ever. This ladies and gentlemen is the inspirational story of Guy. Yeah. The year is 1989, it is a different time and the famous Street Fighter 2 game does not even exist yet. We did have the rudimentary 1987 original though, which made a lot of profit for Capcom, so the company would scramble around to come up with a sequel. A side-scrolling beat-em-up where players could play as Cody, Mike Haggart and of course Guy would see release at the end of the 80s. For brand recognition purposes, this title was originally test marketed as Street Fighter 89. However, due to a negative response to the name from arcade vendors, who stated that it was nothing like a Street Fighter game, the game's title would be changed to Final Fight, and the rest is history. As you can now tell though, the two franchises have been linked since their inception, and were at one point the exact same franchise, so it makes sense for the characters to begin crossing paths at a later date. As for Guy, the focus of today's video, the character was created by Akira Yasuda, whom he would conceive by taking inspiration from Sho Kasugi, a former All Japan Karate champion who would gain popularity as an actor in the 1980s, often playing a ninja. Guy's origin story would mirror that of Kasugi, in that he would foul his Japanese university admission exam and move to the United States as a fallback plan. In Kasugi's case, after failing twice, he was convinced to make the move by his older sister, who would convince him to make it so that he could try and find his fortune, even paying for his flight. Once Guy arrived in the United States, he would begin a new life in Metro City, a fictional city on the Atlantic coast that is based on New York City. While seeking a better life, Guy arrived in a location whereby crime had reached alarming levels. However, the city's mayor and former pro wrestler, Mike Hagar, was doing his best to get the situation under control. Guy, who was a ninja in training prior to the move to the States, now finds himself in this hostile environment. Here, he befriends a fellow expert fighter named Cody Travers, a hot-headed young man who is often involved in street brawls, who just so happens to be dating Mayor Mike Hagar's daughter Jessica, a relationship that Mike doesn't particularly approve of. Mike Hager, who successfully managed to suppress crime levels down in the city, soon faces repercussions as the dominant crime syndicate in the area, known as the Mad Gear Gang, kidnap his daughter in retaliation. After the group's leader, Belga, tries to use the kidnapping to extort the mayor, Mike decides to take the law into his own hands and goes after the gang himself. Aware though that this would be a taller order to partake on his own, he puts his differences aside with Cody so they can get Jessica back. To acquire even more manpower, this is where our hero of the episode, Guy, comes in, who through his loyalty to Cody, decides to join the fight, so that the highly skilled trio can pound the Mad Gear gang into the ground. In this side-scrolling beat-em-up, Guy would be seen for the first time, establishing his trademark appearance and character traits. The calm, reserved, noble-spirited, stoic warrior with a strong sense for justice would be portrayed wearing an orange sleeveless ninja gi. While from the first game alone, we never had the opportunity to learn a great deal about him as a character, there were still pieces of dialogue that would help give us an idea, even indicating that he is a one-track minded individual. When interacting with the Mad Gear Gang's Relento, who puts the offer on the table for him to join the Mad Gear Gang, Guy simply states that the Mad Gear Gang is evil, and he destroys evil, suggesting that Guy has a very black and white worldview and lacks critical thinking skills, an element of his character we shall touch more on later. Ultimately, the iconic trio are successful in taking down Belga, defeating the Mad Gear Gang and rescuing Jessica. 
The events of this video game elevate the trio to decorated heroes within Metro City, but Guy's life story was only just getting started. Due to the success of the game, Final Fight would be ported to the 16-bit Super Nintendo, but this scaled-down port that featured many omissions, including a lack of cooperative play, would cut the Japanese warrior from the game. Capcom, being well Capcom, would go on to re-release the game on the system at a later date as Final Fight Guy. Basically, practically the same game, only this time you could play as Guy, and Cody would miss the party instead. It would not be until Final Fight CD for the Mega CD that we would get a truly decent arcade conversion on a home console. By 1993, the Super Nintendo would finally receive a cooperative Final Fight game. This would be the arcade game sequel that was simply titled Final Fight 2. Guy would once again not be playable, however Guy would play a role in the game's story. The game outlays that after the Mad Gear Gang's defeat and peace being achieved in Metro City, Guy would opt to go on a training journey, which is why he is not playable in the second game. The remnants of the Mad Gear Gang however used this as an opportunity to take revenge under their new leader. The gang regroup and even go as far as to visit Japan to kidnap Guy's fiance Rena along with her father, his former sensei. Guy, who is missing on his training journey as this is all unfolding, forces Renner's warrior sister, known as Mackie, to seek out Mike Hagger, who she teams with along with his apprentice Carlos on a brawling adventure on a global search across the world on a quest to defeat the Mad Gear Gang for good. Eventually, the new trio are successful in defeating the group's leader, Retu, who falls to his doom just like Belga before him. The ending of this game reveals the characters receiving a letter from Guy, with him thanking them for all they have done in his absence, promising he will be back soon. 1993 would see Guy become a playable character once more, within the NES's Mighty Final Fight, an 8-bit exclusive title that retails the events of the original arcade game, but with a super deformed art style and in a more comical fashion. For example, this time, Belga's motivation for the kidnapping is because he wants to marry Jessica. The third proper Final Fight game would arrive in December of 1995, and would arrive as a Super Nintendo exclusive. After the Mad Gear Gang was crushed in Final Fight 2, a power void was created within the underworld of Metro City. A power struggle would ensue, with the Skullcross Gang rising up and becoming the dominant force. They even go as far as to bomb the city, inciting riots, allowing their leader known as Black to escape from prison. This leads to Mike Hagger and Guy setting out to cleanse the city once more, but this time they are accompanied by a female police officer known as Lucia and a man who wants revenge on Skullcross known as Dean. Ultimately though, peace in the city is restored once more. Just one week after the release of Final Fight 3 though, Guy would make one of his most important video game appearances yet, becoming a fully playable roster member within Street Fighter Alpha Warrior's Dreams. Many say that Guy's appearances during the Alpha series of games take place when he is on his training mission throughout Final Fight 2, bringing nice cohesion to his overall character plot. Street Fighter Alpha features Guy with his most detailed sprite work as of yet, giving us a better look at the character than ever before, including artwork offering up a closer look at his face. In the game, the man is constantly frowning, very rarely laughing or smiling, further emphasising his stoicness. As one would expect, his moveset is naturally based off his previous beat'em up appearances, and his speed and ninjutsu skills have been preserved. He can also continue to utilise his trademark off the wall kick and high speed dashes, making him a master of launching sudden surprise attacks. To keep continuity up, he can also utilise a number of Bushin Ryu techniques, such as a turning elbow strike that can duck under incoming projectiles. In the story of the first Street Fighter Alpha game that would later be retconned by the events that take place in the rest of the Alpha series, Guy opts to fight M. Bison, simply due to sensing evil in him. See, I did say this guy was one-track minded. If defeating Bison when using Guy, Guy states that he has found his inner power, with a crumbled Bison on the ground warning the Japanese warrior that one day he will make him pay. The game is also successful in establishing a rivalry between Guy and Ryu, with the pairing functioning as sub-bosses to one another. With little time to breathe, three months later in February of 1996, Guy will be kept busy, this time appearing in Street Fighter Alpha 2, which retcons the events of Guy's training journey. Through the story of the game, Guy meets Rose, who informs him of a void within his mind, leading to Guy boldly boasting that is simply because there is nothing on his mind. 
Rose acknowledges that he is both so strong, yet so stupid simultaneously. But Guy easily defeats her before adding M. Bison to his list of wins. His ending sees him meeting up with his master Zeku. Zeku acknowledges that he is a potential worthy successor to him. However, there can only be one Grandmaster at a time. This sees the two fighting to determine who is the best with Guy achieving victory. Zeku declares Guy as the 39th heir to the Bashinru art and warns him of an evil force which threatens to corrupt the world before disappearing. Guy resolves to defeat the evil that his predecessor warns him of. 1998 would lead to some of Guy's most important character development yet. After his journey concludes, he has returned to Metro City to meet Mike Hagger. Hagger informs him of an eerie organisation linked to drug trafficking who are plaguing the city. Guy asks Hagger why he hasn't called Cody to ask for help. But Hagger informs him that he can't as Cody has gone to prison. Hagger tells One Dimensional Thinking Cody that it doesn't necessarily make Cody a bad person as everyone has their own way of fighting for their goals and worries for Cody's mental health as he has not been the same since breaking up with Jessica. After facing off against Karen and learning from her about a knowledge of a prophecy, it soon becomes clear that the evil presence Zeku warned Guy about and the drug trafficking plague in Metro City are both M. Bison's Shadaloo crime syndicate. So Karen and Guy set out to destroy it. Guy encounters Rose once again, who he tries to dissuade from taking on Shadaloo herself, but eventually in a shocking moment for our dense hero, he runs into an old friend Cody. This reunion, however, is not the happy one that Guy had always dreamed of, as Cody, the restless street fighter, still wearing his prison jumpsuit, has managed to escape from prison so that he can carry on his violent rampage. He informs Guy that they have both always been very different people. Guy has been motivated by justice, where he simply loves the thrill of fighting itself. In fact, he enjoys brawling so much that he is addicted to it, even choosing to fight against his old friend Guy. After engaging in combat with the now merciless vigilante, an escaped convict, the pair calm down. Guy finally has an epiphany and realises the world is not the simple black and white place that he once thought it was, and things are a lot more complex than simply a battle between good versus evil. Guy is forced to accept that although Cody is not the man he thought he was, that he is still his friend and must accept that they have their own lives to live. When Guy asks if Cody wants to stay in Metro City, he replies that he still had travelling to do and the pair continues their journeys. Guy bids him farewell, realising that deep down inside, Cody is still a good person, despite his criminal convictions. After his conclusion fight in the game against M. Bison, he discovers that Bison has already defeated Rose and that she is now severely injured, leading the trained ninja to experience more new emotions for the first time. Apart from worrying for her health, he holds her in his arms, experiencing all new levels of unexplained fear. This is due to the fact that unbeknownst to Guy, Bison has latched onto Rose as a host for his spirit. Nevertheless, Rose lives and all is well until Bison returns. With the Street Fighter Alpha series concluding, Guy would surface again one year later in 1999, this time appearing in a new Final Fight game known as Final Fight Revenge. The poorly received 3D polygonal versus fighting game that appeared in Japanese arcades and as a late Japan only Saturn release in the year 2000. Apparently set between the events of the original Final Fight arcade game and the events of Final Fight 2 and the Street Fighter Alpha games that occurred in tandem, Guy still is in Metro City and can feel an evil presence over the area. In a bizarre twist, the zombified version of Belga, the original leader of the Mad Gear Gang is back which leads to all the fighting that takes place in this strange game. In this game, Belga is able to bite Guy, giving him an unknown illness, which leads to Guy leaving Metro City so that he can focus on fighting his condition through an intense meditation regime. While this is the case, many believe this element of the story to be ridiculous and completely non-canon, as of course no reference to this is made at all throughout any of the Street Fighter Alpha games. So you decide here if this fits into your own head canon. The last Final Fight game that would not see release until 2006, which is also not considered canon, was released on the original Xbox and PlayStation 2. This GTA 3 inspired game known as Final Fight Streetwise stars Cody's younger brother Kyle, a young man who ends up on a quest to save his now kidnapped and drug addicted brother from the hands of a crime syndicate. 
Things have gotten very dark for Cody indeed. When looking deeper at this American-made game story, you can begin to see exactly why it is now considered non-canon. As for example, Guy's representation in the game is not in line with any of his previous appearances at all, and is completely in contrast with his justice-driven, evil-fighting mindset he has had in all of the other games. In Final Fight Streetwise, in a ridiculous twist, Do Good A Guy is now an Asian crime lord living in the Japan Town District of Metro City. The backstory of the title explains that he committed serious crimes in his past, however Cody was the one who ended up taking the fall and going to prison in his place, leading to a breakdown in Cody and Guy's friendship. Feeling guilty for what he has done, he assists Kyle to find whereabouts his older brother is. But looking at the stories of this game, did they even check Final Fight source material before making this? It's ridiculous. In 2008, the next chapter of Guy's official story would take place. This would see him feature as a playable roster member in Super Street Fighter 4, with Street Fighter 4 occurring the furthest along the timeline out of all of his canon appearances yet, taking place after Street Fighter 2, where prior every event he was involved in occurred before it. In this one, Sin, a branch of Shadaloo, flood Metro City with weaponry, leading Guy to go on a mission to try and save the city yet again. On this journey, he finally encounters Cody once again, leading to the two facing off against one another in another duel of the fates. Cody leaves Guy with parting words of, People change, I've changed, you've changed. Guy enters the game's Sin tournament, where he encounters Rose and then Bison once more. Guy threatens Bison who is trying to possess Rose. He appears atop the Bison's plane and threatens to destroy it if he does not hand her over. Guy then resuscitates Rose who is surprised to see him. Finally Guy and Cody encounter each other once more, whereby Guy tries to further come to terms with Cody's choices by pointing out to him that on his rampages of violence he seems to target criminals, thugs and terrorists which still makes him a hero despite his criminal record and lust for brutality. He asks Cody to return to his old life, but Cody states the only place he belongs is in a cell. Moving on to Street Fighter V, which occurs even further down the timeline, while sadly Guy is not included in the game as a playable character, it suggests that perhaps Cody listened to some of Guy's logic. And through the help of Mike Hagger, Cody manages to reform himself, even becoming the new mayor of Metro City in the process a story covered in my Fall of Cody video that you may want to check out after you have done with this one. As for Guy himself, or absent from Street Fighter V, he does get referenced multiple times. This includes in Rashid's story, whereby he contacts him on social media. By this point, Guy is an online blogger of all things, teaching his fighting style to the world. I guess a lot has changed since 1989. Rather surprisingly, long-term Capcom character and Guy's master, Ziku, would finally become playable in Street Fighter V, and Guy's silhouette is shown when playing his story. But outside of Street Fighter and Final Fight games, he would also make a few other appearances in video games over the years too, such as Namco Cross Capcom, where he teams up with Ginzu the Ninja and Captain Commando. More interestingly, he would also become a DLC fighter in Street Fighter Cross Tekken a crossover title in which he forms a long-awaited partnership once again with friend and rival Cody. In the quest for Pandora's box, getting to the end of the game just sees the box erasing itself from history, but Guy claims he enjoyed the adventure, stating it was just like the old days, and Cody agrees, stating it was not boring either. This leads to Guy cracking a very rare symbolic smile. Outside of video games, Guy has also made other appearances, as well as including in comic books, mangas and animations. In Street Fighter Alpha, the animation for example, he would be one of the many warriors who would accompany Ryu Ken and Chun-Li to Shadaloo's base. However, outside of a fight against Dao Sim, his role is not very prominent throughout the film. Rather surprisingly, in animated form, he would make the biggest splash in the American-produced Street Fighter cartoon, which was loosely inspired by the first live-action Street Fighter movie. He features prominently in one episode that was accurately titled Final Fight, a great little episode that sees Guy and Cody team up with Ken and Ryu on a mission to save Jessica from the Mad Gear gang. In fact, Mike Hagger even gets involved in the action in the end too, with Belga ultimately falling out of a window once more. Awesome. So I guess that just about rounds up the story of Guy, a loyal friend who was on a one-track mission to eradicate all evil, who would later realise that the world was a lot more nuanced than that. 
It's a shame that most people online cannot come to the same realisations as Guy, as most fools out there still seem to be heavily involved in supporting just one side of partisan politics. So my advice to everyone watching today, please, 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 can we all be more like Guy, as life is a lot more nuanced than right versus left, us versus them, or good versus evil. Think for yourselves and try and think from the perspective of other people. No one likes ill-educated, one-dimensional idiots. Yeah. Well, this is getting deeper than I expected, so I think I'll conclude here. I'm Big Daddy Top Hat, and that was the inspirational story of Guy, a character in my opinion who had a truly great character arc. Let me know in the comment section down below which fighter you would like me to cover next, and in the meantime, why not check out my videos on Mike Hagger, Cody, or even Poison. I have made plenty of videos like this in the past. Content like this are in part made thanks to the generous people who back my work on Patreon, so special thank yous go out to A Murder of Crows, Carl Johnson, Heo Paulo Lopez, Nostalgia Collector, Ben Haradine, Coriar Marsh Senior, Ron Dinched, Evan Balder, Philip Nanth, Azurakai, Dropkin Varela, Michael Cullix, Ego, Jordan Durant, Ian Boyle, Nick Daniels, Princess Zana, Daniel Daly, Computer Man, House of a Ted, Gary Pinkett, ECU Professor, Johnny Holly, August Piazza, Justin Wang, Capcom vs SNK, Hermes Gonzalez, Man Shovel, Michael Hall, Sang Hee, Norma Stitz, Langston Miller, Noob, Sarah Powell, Vlay McRenee, Marvin Ariliga, TOG Driver, Luis Viant, John Bates, David Barr, Chris Fisk, Rick67, Antonio Rodriguez, Craig Jenkins, Synth Spaces, Punk Toast, and everybody else who backs what I do on Patreon. Sorry, uh, Patreon, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, cheerio.